hello friends welcome back to my channel and uh, today we are back with an, another interesting tutorial so this tutorial we are going to see about Tuya cloud and how you can connect your raspberry pi into the Tuya cloud so uh, what we see in this uh, tutorial will be like uh, uh, you know, uh, how to connect for that uh, what we need is we need to have a raspberry pi so it can be a raspberry pi 4 or you know it's an older version as well or raspberry pi uh, zero as well it can be used and uh, you also need to create an account in the GIOT platform so that's it's very pretty simple uh, things to do but uh, this is a very useful uh, tutorial for you so uh, before I you know get into the actual uh, tutorial uh, I also would like to tell you like by end of this tutorial I will also share you uh, to your developer challenge which you can uh, participate and you should be able to get you know seven dollar coupon and also once you you know complete the project you should be able to get a finger bot which is you know actually a, a good robotic uh, component from Tuya and uh, that is very useful to convert your uh, you know uh, non uh, smart devices into a smart device like you know switches and all those things and you can also get a $35 Amazon coupon so I'll be uh, talking about this in the uh, end of the tutorial how to participate in this okay so uh, please watch this tutorial completely so uh, before I get into uh, you know uh, actual things I also want to tell you like what is Tuya so Tuya is, is a you know a cloud uh, platform so to give you a detail like uh, Tuya is a uh, internet of things cloud platform uh, that is uh, you know available for developers to create your own uh, you know development environment and also it includes like a uh, platform as service and also software service and other cloud uh, services so i will give you the link for tuya in the video description you can have a look in it in it so the benefit of tuya is like you will be able to buy you know tuya smart components which you can connect to the tuya uh, open cloud uh, it will also have open APIs and a lot of other features which you can use. You can uh, develop your own SDK you know, or app uh, to Android or other apps as well to using Tuya. And also you can you know, uh, develop your component using the Tuya uh, IoT platform. And uh, the other benefits is like, you know, if you, you don't have to use Tuya company, if you have, uh, you know, other uh, component that also can be integrated with the Tuya as well. So uh, let's see, you know, uh, about connecting a uh, smart form, uh, smart devices through Tuya. So basically, you know, you have uh, you know, uh, different options like you have a Tuya uh, smart app or, you know, you have a, you know, home uh, app as well. So these are the two basic uh, apps which you usually use, uh, you know, to access uh, your smart home. So if you have a fingerboard or anything, you can directly, uh, you, know, uh, you know, connect to the smart app and you can access the connect uh, control them using that so the benefit of to your iot is like once you integrate that into your iot you can control all these devices uh, from any places so if you see you know uh, on the screen like you know if you go to this to your uh, iot platform and you create uh, devices there are so much of devices like smart home large home kitchen appliances so a lot of appliances you can create and you can control them using to your app and iot so before I get into more about this, uh, I have a request like if you are new to my channel or if you have not subscribed to my channel, click on the subscribe button, uh, kindly like my video, share and comment. So in order to give you uh, the detail about Tuya, you can go to Tuya.com, I can uh, read through it. So as I said, you know, it's uh, one of uh, leading IoT cloud platform. So, which is uh, really helpful. You can uh, you know, go through it. Have a lot of uh, product categories. You have a lot of developers using it, and there are a lot of SDKs. So, uh, this is just a glimpse. So, you can uh, go through it. So, I'm not going through the complete end to end of this. And you know, uh, in the IoT platform, if you uh, see the architecture, you can go through the how the architecture goes for this uh, IoT platform. So uh, that's just for information, you can go through that as well. So what we will do is like we need to create an account in the developer uh, site or in IoT platform. So we'll get started with this uh, process of connecting Raspberry Pi to the Geo IoT cloud. 
or what the benefit is like once you connect your Raspberry Pi, you can con control more devices uh, using the IoT Cloud. So let's uh, get into the actual step-by-step uh, -step process. So first we will start with creating an IoT uh, platform account. So let's go to this site developer.tia.com and uh, you know you can see a sign up button over here and you can also an IoT platform. So there are two ways you can do. You can click on sign up and you can fill up the details over here or you can go back and you can click on this IoT platform which will open up uh, a new window. Uh, as you can see this IoT uh, your smart intelligent IoT platform where we have to register it so if you have already registered you can log in uh, with here if you don't have it you just click on sign up which will bring up the similar screen where we have brought it there so now you just need to enter your email address so you can enter the email address and the password for it so I have uh, entered the password and you can also your a region so I am from India so I will select my country so if you are in a different uh, country you can use that but I think there is a problem with the password so let me recheck it okay now it's good so you can click on agree and uh, click on agree so now oh, what we'll do is you'll be getting an email uh, with a verification code which uh, you need to enter it here so I have uh, entered the uh, account details and just click on create so you will be routed back to the screen. Now you can uh, log in with the uh, email address and password which you have created. So enter your email address and the password. Okay, so you just click on login. So now I'm logged into the TIA uh, IoT platform and now you can see since I'm logging in for the first time it gives you uh, the navigation uh, details like you know what features you have so you have the left bar with the capabilities like overview product app cloud those things and you know you what each uh, you know, things will do like device management or integrated purchase center uh, you know the cost details so everything you know it will tell you uh, what do we have it on each screen? So I'm just clicking next so you can go through it So now this is our uh, IoT platform uh, page where we can create our product so you can create our cloud uh, Those things so here what we are going to do is we are going to create uh, our product for, uh, and integrate that with the Raspberry Pi and uh, My Raspberry Pi, you know, I'm connecting through VNC viewer. So uh, I'll just log in with my user account and password for it so you can see I have uh, connected to my Raspberry Pi so you can see like I'm into the Raspberry Pi I will be using this uh, command line uh, for running some commands okay so I'm just keeping this aside so let's uh, get into the uh, process of uh, creating the product uh, in for Raspberry Pi so you can go to product uh, or you can just click on create here okay and uh, since Raspberry Pi is a non-standard uh, product here so you will not be able to see it here so you, you have to click on can't uh, find the category and you need to give some name over here so I'm going to give the name as Raspberry Pi switch and I'm going to give some brief description testing uh, Raspberry Pi connection or something like that and you need to give, use the product as uh, protocol as Wi-Fi and you can keep the rest of things uh, you know, uh, low power consumption and you can click on uh, create so now if you see uh, you know, our product is created so I'll just click on OK here so now we are in the uh, development page and you have a few tabs as function definition device panel hardware uh, product configuration debugging device debugging testing those kind of things right so now here we can create a function so in the normal cases you can use standard functions but in uh, Raspberry Pi you need to create a custom function because it's not a standard you uh, know pro uh, product here so what we need to do is we need to click on add and uh, you can use uh, DPID which uh, uh, this will be used so and the, some DP name okay so it can be any name and some identifier so uh, let me just give some names 
So I just given a name like switch so and also you have a different kind of data type. So if you read this uh, question mark, you will be able to, to get the details. What is Boolean? What is numeric test? So I will go for a Boolean. Okay. So and uh, the data type uh, that transfer type as well. If you see, it will tell you like what uh, each will depend. So send and report means you can send commands from cloud to device and also device can send back to cloud. And same way like report and you know, send only so I'll go with the send and report again okay, uh, click on ok so now we can see this uh, custom function is uh, added here and if you see like you know I have a PID created for this uh, product so this will be used uh, in the programming side so I will just uh, you know make a note of this as well so or we can come back and take a note of this later as well now if you move on to the next device panel you can uh, select the visualizations but uh, basically in um, uh, raspberry pi uh, you can only go with um, the debugging mode so i'll just apply that uh, for other uh, you know, devices maybe you, can, you will be able to create a different kind of ui as well so here i will go with this uh, debug ui okay when you connect to the to your smart app you know you'll be able to see uh, something similar kind of with there now let's go to the hardware development side now we need to select uh, the self-developed module SDK so you, you have other options which you can use it when in other cases but uh, here you know you can go through the documentation like what do you mean by module SDK or there are other kind of uh, things as well which you can do and you need to select the general CPU uh, cross platform these are our default uh, components so I'll just give a name maybe test okay and I just I will click on OK here so now we can see a module is created for test, right? And uh, you know you have a SDK as well to download. So if you click on it, uh, you know, it will take you to this uh, uh, documentation where you know we need to do these steps when you want to set up the SDK. Okay. So let me go back. So let me go back to the screen now. What uh, we need is we need to create uh, a license because in order to connect, uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi with this IoT platform, we need to uh, have a license. So you need a UID and uh, you know, license number. So for that, we will use this uh, get uh, 10 free license. So uh, I'm not going to use any paid option. So this is a free license. So I'll just click on that and uh, you can just click on uh, uh, confirm. Okay. So you can see like you know, it will uh, get into this screen where you need to use this select license list and you can just click on submit order. So you know, once you submit it, it will uh, you not know, take some time. So you can just wait uh, for it get uh, completed and it will give you a list of license. Okay. So I will just wait. Now we can see this uh, license list is uh, created. You can download it. Okay, once uh, the download is completed, so I will uh, go back to this uh, product page. Now what we need is we have uh, all the details uh, uh, done. Okay, so let me just skip this. So you can see your product uh, details is listed here, right? So now what we need to do is like we need to go to our Raspberry Pi and we need to run this commands. So uh, you need to run this sudo apt uh, get install so we need to install make cmake and uh, uh, this component so let's run that so um, i have already done that so uh, in this machine so probably it have already the newest version so no i think it's already have it and uh, next step is we need to clone this uh, uh, repository so we'll uh, just run this uh, command to clone this repository. So we'll just wait for that to be completed. This may take some time depending upon the speed of your internet because it's uh, files which it need to download. So I will uh, skip this session, uh, section and I will come back once the download is completed. Okay, great. So the file copy is completed. So let me clear out the screen and uh, if I go to this uh, folder, to your folder, and uh, you may see some examples. So let me go to the examples. 
and you will have a example called switch demo so let me go into that and uh, we have a few uh, files over here so i need to ch change some configuration in the tuya config.h file so let me use uh, vi editor so tuya config.h and now you can see this have uh, some contents uh, where you need to enter the product key uid and authentication key so uh, this uh, product key is the product ID of your uh, Raspberry Pi which you created in the IoT platform and this UID and the auth keys is coming from the license list which we downloaded from there. So I, I will uh, you know, update this and uh, I will be coming back so uh, you know, I will just skip this section So and uh, once I save it uh, will so I will uh, run this uh, mkdr build command. Uh, to create a folder and build and I will cd into it and then uh, I will do a c make okay. this may take a uh, few minutes so let's just wait okay so the compiler is starting and now we need to run the make command okay so I'll run the make so this will take some time so it's uh, going to do a complete uh, no, build so we need to wait for this to be completed so i will uh, pause the screen i'll be back once this is done okay so the make is completed so now what we need to do is like we need to run the demo so we need to uh, run the bin switch demo so let's run that Now, if you see, uh, it has uh, created a scan code as well. So now we can see this MQTT uh, direct connected and waiting the two app to scan the device. So if you scroll up a little bit, there is a you know, QR scan code, right, which we can use it to scan. So the next part, what we need to do is on the uh, uh, app. So let me just keep this side. The remaining part I'm going to do it on the mobile. So I have uh, the Tuya Smart app. Uh, so I will just open that and I will log in into that. Okay. So I will log in with my email address. Okay, I think uh, for uh, the Tuya app, we need to uh, sign up again. So I will uh, use the same uh, email address here. Okay, so it will send you a verification code. So let me check that and I'll uh, uh, update it here. So once the verification code is entered, it will ask you to create a password. And uh, it's asking to access some uh, things. So if you want, you can give it. So in, then, you know, we need to add a device. So let me go back here. So uh, since this has been uh, running for some time, I'll just exit uh, from this screen and I will run it again. So it can uh, recreate the code, okay, the QR code. So I will just come back and I will uh, click on add device and I will just uh, so you need to click on add device and you need to click on the QR scanner and which you can scan this uh, QR code. And you can see that you know the device is added. You can see successfully added Raspberry Pi switch. And now once you click on done, uh, you should be able to see the button uh, like a Raspberry Pi switch. And if you scroll down, you can see also like device MQTT connected. And you can see the button like what we given like uh, 101 switch boolean, right? If I click on this one, you can see you know the same thing here on the screen is giving. Uh, the output and also on the screen you can see it's giving uh, the output so uh, that's how you know it's connected now so um, uh, you can use this for a lot of uh, you know um, 
uh, integration with Raspberry Pi and uh, no H2I IoT Cloud for to control a lot of uh, devices. So, uh, so this is the way how you can do it. The configuration we have gone to the complete end-to-end uh, uh, -end configuration. You, you can also customize your uh, uh, no, the code so you can develop your own uh, customized one as well. So I'm not uh, going to go the next step. So we'll see more about the uh, you know, uh, other components like fingerboard, uh, the bridge, uh, you know, other devices which do you have and how you can make use of it uh, for your smart home and also how you can make use of the IoT platform for uh, future projects for your smartphone. Uh, so we'll see that in the upcoming tutorial and uh, don't worry I will link all the you know, tutorial link into the video description and also the link for Tuya uh, which I was going to talk now so uh, in the beginning I told you like there is uh, an option where you can contribute and you can participate into this competition so uh, you can see the Tuya have a developer challenge uh, so you can sign up over here using this link which I will give it into the video description uh, this is a great way you can as a you know, smart home or you're an IoT enthusiast you can sign up for this you can win free and uh, you know uh, award uh, winning finger pot and also $35 Amazon gift so you know you have, there are multiple levels of prices as I mentioned so you just can sign up and you can achieve any of this so uh, you can you know uh, be a developer or engineer or programmer or makers or geek so there are four uh, challenge missions to choose so you can use uh, any of these like it can be develop an app using to your app SDK or it can be you know uh, how control smart home devices or it can be an open IoT hardware you know you're going to link it with uh, to your cloud, uh, cloud platform or you know or it can be an automated system to your API product so you can go through this so I will link this uh, you know um, into the video description so make use of it so just to recap, so what we have seen is like we have seen how to connect Raspberry Pi to the Geo IoT cloud. So we have seen the step-by-step -step process for that, right? So I hope this tutorial is informative for you and uh, you know, keep watching for more videos. Kindly subscribe uh, and uh, like this video, share and comment.